Hey guys, welcome to this painting tutorial for Blood Angels Space Marines. What you'll need to follow along with this painting tutorial is a wraith bone spray for the undercoat. Then you'll also need, in your contrast range, Blood Angels Red, Black Templar, uh, Leviadon Blue, Orc Flesh, Fire Slayer Flesh, Eandon Yellow, the Lupus Pink, and Skeleton Horde. You'll want to keep a pot of Wraithbone on standby just in case for any touch ups. You'll want a pot of Agrax Earth sh Shade for shading. There, that's hard to say. You want Lead Belcher and Stormhost Silver, Retributor Armor and Liberator Gold, Kislev Flesh, Fire Dragon Bright, Moot Green, and Screaming Skull. Cool, so the very first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do our armour for this Blood Angel. Because it's the biggest area and it's the place that we can make the most mistakes, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to use straight from the pot, our Blood Angel's red pot. We're going to give it an all-over coat of Blood Angel's red. Now, a couple of things to note before we start. I'm using a medium layer brush, and this is because I don't want to put too much paint on the model at once. I want to take nice small brush strokes uh, and nice small amounts from the pot, and I want to brush it on quite evenly, because what we're going to do is we're going to do a second coat. Now, a quick tip for when you're painting with Space Marines. I find that with contrast, gravity plays a, plot, a part. So, actually when we're painting, we don't want to kind of just do this all over the place. We want to kind of brush it on slowly, but we always want to go towards a join or towards kind of a, a, a nowhere space so that we can draw the paint off. And that way we are left with quite a smooth finish on the, on the model. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab just a little bit, kind of like that much. And what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of go onto the model and we're going to start brushing it on, but we're always going to move downwards because our joins are always here and we can always draw it off the model in order to get rid of that excess you see so as we keep going and we keep going in the same direction one we're helping that whole gravity issue but also we're getting a nice smooth coat as you can see there's no no pooling here bring it a little bit closer there's no pooling and it already looks quite smooth. We can just touch up as well. And because we're always going towards a join, the paint will run in towards the join. And then if we're kind of drawing it off the model, we've still got all that excess on our brush rather than just kind of pooling around here on the ankle. Cool, so what we'll do is we'll go all over the model and then we'll come back. Okay, so now that you uh, that uh, single layer of Blood Angels Red is done, uh, I actually went ahead and did the uh, other two in the unit as well, because uh, that's how uh, great these paints are. They take very little time. Um, you can see that it's, it's covered well. It looks nice and smooth, but it doesn't look quite as dark and rich as, as we might perhaps like. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our medium base brush, uh, medium layer brush, I should say, once more. And uh, we're gonna, we're just gonna give it another thin coat of Blood Angels Red. And what this will do is it will really make that uh, kind of, that give it that deep shade across these flatter panels. And using that same technique as we did before, what we wanna do is we wanna kind of just always just pull the Blood Angels Red down towards either a joint or off the model uh, and it, you, you kind of you can go a little bit quicker here because because um, we're going to use uh, less paint as it were uh, we kind of just all we want to do is just kind of almost just do another kind of like a wash or a glaze as it were so uh, what you want to do is you want to do this all over the model and then leave it to dry for probably about 10 minutes and then come back So as you can see, now that we've done those two coats of Blood Angels Red, I've done it on this one, and I've not done it on this one, and you can just, you can see the difference in kind of the richness and the tone of them. Uh, but crucially as well, we've still got this really nice smooth finish across the model. Uh, 
and it just it it just works a lot better now that we've got kind of got two uh, two coats on there. So the next thing to do, if you want to, you don't have to do this, but what I like to do is use Fire Dragon Bright and just kind of hit those sharpest corners because you can see we've still got kind of a, a little bit of a highlight and kind of like just here on his arm. But if we really kind of want to really make it pop out, we just use a smidge of Fire Dragon Bright just on the sharpest edges. And sometimes I think, feel, um, if you really kind of just want to see where those would be, you can like get your phone, for example, and um, just like stick the torch on and do that. And you can kind of see, all right, well, look, so we've got definitely on that corner and on the, on the, on, on his kind of, on his, on his neck there, on his chest piece. So yeah, time to grab our palette and uh, thin some Fire Dragon Bright. Cool, so I've thinned down that Fire Dragon Bright. Now all I'm gonna do is just with my small layer brush, just grab a little point on my brush like this and then just pick out those areas that we saw or that we just wanna kind of draw attention to on the model. So we just kind of want it on that little corner there, like that, and kind of just here on the, below the, below the sh shoulder pad, uh, kind of around the neck as well. We just kind of want to go around the whole model uh, doing this, only on these little corners and things. Great, so now that that highlighting's done, you can see like just here on the foot, how like it just kind of, it just adds another kind of layer of, well, contrast. I mean, it's not contrast, but it just kind of makes the light catch it a little bit more. So the next thing to do is to just neaten up all of these uh, kind of splodges that we've got kind of like here on his mask and on the Aquila here, because we want these to be a different color now. And um, well, it's just easier to kind of just be indiscriminate and just kind of, even if something's not gonna be contrast, like the gun here, I usually find just kind of putting some wraith bone over like, so I've done a little bit there, um, kind of on the pouches and stuff like that. Just anywhere where you've kind of splodged where it shouldn't be red, I just find kind of uh, just neatening it up now just makes your life a little bit easier. So thinning it down uh, as, as you would any other normal base paint, you want to take, uh, take your brush load and you just kind of want to work your way around the model, just kind of correcting your mistakes. So for example, I mean, these are going to be lead belcher, uh, which is not a contrast paint, but um, this will help you just kind of remember where to put things as it were. Uh, you may need uh, two thin coats of this, um, just because, uh, well, there we go. So now that he's dry, what we want to do is we want to fill in all the black parts, because this is kind of the, the second biggest colour, as it were. So we're going to open up our pot of black Templar, and then we're going to get our brush, grab straight from the pot, and then we're going to start whacking it on all the parts that we want to be black and in this case it's things like the gun casing the aquila uh, these grenades and actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this belt feed as well um just for sake of time so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna paint the belt feed with black templar and then i'm gonna dry brush it with storm host silver and this will kind of give it that kind of quite cool effect. Um, but this way we can cover it very quickly and still look cool. So yeah, go around, do all of the black Templar. All right, so now that that black Templar has all dried, what we're gonna do is gonna use some Leviathan Blue just to paint in his mask. And this is because, uh, well, the uh, fire support elements of the Blood Angels, they have blue helmets. So we're gonna paint his mask blue. Uh, so the uh, all, we don't need very much of this because Leviathan blue is quite um, thick, as it were. So we just, we just want kind of, you can pretty much do it with one brush load like this. 
um, and you get a really nice finish out of it anyway. Um, but you don't also don't want to you want to be careful not to clog it up too much because uh, you want to just get that you want to get that really nice um, kind of uh, natural highlight that the contrast gives you from this paint. Cool, and with the mask done, we now want to use wildwood on all the leather parts. These are like the holster, these little pouches he's got all around. There's one in there, one there, one there. So all we need is just one brush load, and we just want to paint it on. And again, just be a little bit careful with the wildwood because it's such a kind of dominating colour. You don't need loads of it to get a cool effect. You also kind of at this point you now want to really start being careful around the Blood Angels red stuff that you've already done. And the next colour we want to use is Skeleton Horde and all of the parchment. So there's one under here and there's one at the top here. So once again just grabbing a brush load. I find you can be quite heavy with the uh, Skeleton Horde, uh, depending on how kind of weathered you want the parchment to look. Um, obviously the heavier, the more papery it will look. Next up we want to use Fire Slayer Flesh for his face and any other flesh parts, not that there are many on Space Marines. So for Fire Slayer Flesh on something like this, we don't, that's a little bit too much, but we just want a little bit of the, of the paint on the brush and then what we want to do is we kind of want to start up there and go around and just kind of pull it round like that uh, and then just kind of fill in the eyes as gently as you can because you don't want to kind of drown the eyes in fire slayer flesh as it's very easy to do with um, kind of the darkest recesses using contrast. Cool, now that the flesh is dried, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some E-and in yellow and we're just gonna put this on the hair. And next up, we wanna use Volupus Pink on the wax purity seals. So just on there. And next up we want to use orc flesh on all of the uh, cables and things that can be found across his body. So just take a dollop of that and just apply it on. There's a couple, there's one on the gun, there's another little one in there but we'll do something else with that. And we've got some on his on his legs. Cool, so that's us done with the contrast paints for a little while. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the metallics. So what we wanna do is we wanna get some lead belcher and thin it down with a little bit of water. And we wanna go over all of the metallic parts that we wanna be silver. So things like the majority of his gun here and uh, various little mechanical bits. And we wanna get the kind of the underside of the gun like that. And we want to get these little pipes down here on his feet. And then also, another little trick is if you want to do it, what you can do is for things like the soft parts here that you would normally do black and then highlight, what you can do is you can paint them silver and then paint black Templar over them. And the silver will pop out and the black Templar will uh, nestle re nicely in the recesses. So that's what we're going to do. Same for like the undersides of these um, exhaust ports. And with all the silver parts done, we now want to fill out the gold parts, including this little skull here, his little, um, whatever the hell that is, reliquary, I think it is. Uh, there's a skull here and there's a little icon there. So taking a bit of retributor armor that we've thinned down with, our, with a bit of water, we just want to tackle those parts and we'll start under here with his reliquary. All right, so with that, now it's time to shade those metallics. So we're just gonna use Agrax Surf Shade to do both the gold and the silver, um, just cause it gives it a nice uniform look. 
and we're just gonna kind of throw it onto the model. Um, we want to do it over every single bit of metallic that we've that we've just painted. Um, yeah, and then leave it to dry for about twenty minutes. So now what we want to do is we want to use black templar on all the soft bits where we've coated silver, like just in here, and also in the vents underneath him, like this. We just want to take a little bit, not too much. So we kind of almost just want to use this like a like a shade paint. So we're just gonna do that. And like that. What we want to look for is when there's too much. We just want to kind of pull it out. Kind of like that. As you can see the silver still shines through, but the black has shaded it quite effectively and it makes it nice and dark so we don't have to paint it silver, then null and oil, then highlight. So next up we want to dry brush the ammo feed with Stormhose Silver. So we're going to get our dry brush, we're going to take a little bit of Stormhose Silver from the pot and then we're just going to use a piece of tissue paper to work it into the bristles. And then once we've got kind of, kind of something that looks a little bit like that, we're going to take our model and we're just going to run it run the brush gently back and forth over the ammo feed so we're just gonna be very careful that we don't accidentally catch his hand or anything or the black that we've done but we just want to very carefully pick out the edge and just like that he's already looking pretty much finished the only thing left that we need to do is we need to do some edge highlights. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some Stormhose Silver and we're going to edge highlight the uh, the gun uh, the gun parts that we haven't dry brushed. So things like the scope and the barrel here and uh, his little part of his mask just there. We're going to use a bit of Liberator Gold on stuff like the gold details here and on his reliquary there. Uh, we're going to get a bit of moot green. I'm going to go uh, just one over each of these little uh, little cables, including this one, this, this little guy here. And then we're going to use a bit of Kislev flesh on his face and a bit of Screaming Skull on his hair. And just like that, he's done. With his edge highlights applied, the model looks fantastic, I think. Um, very quick to do. It's taken about an hour and a half, maybe two hours to get to this stage, not including the drying time. But all in all, I think that's an excellent way to get some pretty fantastic looking miniatures very quickly. So yeah, on to the rest of the army, I suppose. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe, comment, like, do all those things. You know those drills by now. Um, if you've ever been on YouTube. Again, very new to this, so I'm bad at this sign-off. I must write one. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.